The landscape of Twitch and live streaming in general lately has been up in the air. We've seen many content changes and backpedaling to the policies on Twitch regarding explicit content. We've seen a lot of big name streamers leave Twitch for other platforms such as YouTube and Kick and even TikTok. And if you've been watching streams lately on Twitch, you might have noticed an increase in toxicity in chat. Well, following all of these changes and shifts, we have another big streamer who is leaving the platform, and that streamer is Pokimane. Pokimane is the most followed female Twitch streamer, boasting over 9.3 million followers on Twitch and 6.6 .6 million subscribers on YouTube. She's been streaming since 2013, and she has amassed kind of a controversial following. Some people love her, some people hate her. In 2021, she was on the Forbes 30 Under 30, and she is a business owner as well. Today, though, I want to talk about her departure from Twitch and why she is leaving. So it all started with this post on Twitter on the 30th of January, 2024. Pokimane tweeted, she said, The end of an era. Twitch has been my home for a decade, but it's time to say thank you for all the memories and love during my League, Fortnite, and Among Us days. Now this came as a huge shock to basically everyone. She just kind of came out with this out of nowhere, and it led to a lot of speculation of people saying, Is she going to go to Kick? Is she going to go to YouTube? Is she going to go to TikTok? Like, what, what, is, what is her plan here? Is she leaving forever? Is this a temporary leave? Is she just not exclusively streaming on Twitch anymore, nobody really knew what was going on. But underneath you can see Twitch responded saying, what an incredible journey it's been, we're so proud of everything you've accomplished and what's ahead in the future, you'll always have a home on Twitch. Which kind of leads to thinking that this was a mutual thing, that like Twitch already kind of knew this was happening and is just saying like, all right, see ya, you're always welcome. Um, it was amicable, nothing like bad happened. Pokimane said, stop, don't make me cry more. And all the comments were speculative. Everyone's like, what does this mean? Well, like, what's going on here? I'm not ready. The next day though, Pokimane posted this saying, let's explore something new together, no strings attached, first ever YouTube stream tomorrow, which made people be like, ah, so she's moving to YouTube. That makes a lot of sense. Pokimane has been very against platforms such as Kick for good reason, so YouTube was the logical explanation. She then clarified 14 hours ago as of making this video though, that she is not signed to YouTube or Kick or any streaming site. Don't believe the clickbait. I'm free as a bird and I'll stream anywhere that I want, which is interesting. That means she hasn't signed a contract to exclusively stream on a platform. I don't know if anyone's offered her a contract, but considering it's Pokimane, you would think a platform would offer her a big chunk of money to stream on their platform specifically. Now, we do have some more information regarding why Pokimane made this decision from her podcast, and in this PC Gamer article, it kind of goes over it a little bit. Pokimane says she's insanely grateful to have her Twitch contract that guaranteed income regardless of viewership, but no longer wants to be exclusively tied to Twitch or any other streaming site. The contracts aren't as lucrative as they used to be, she says, and she thinks that having a quota for streaming hours can lead to prioritizing hours streamed versus how good the content that you're streaming is. And that I do understand. If a contract says you need to stream for 60 hours a week, right? Then you need to stream a lot every day. And even if you don't have any like big event or any cool game to play or anything that you really are excited to play, you still have to stream, which can lead to burnout. It can lead to you not really f wanting to do it, right? Um, which even I, with no contract with us as a smaller streamer, I felt that way where I felt pressured to playing a certain game when I didn't really want to. And I was just doing it for stream hours, which is not the way you want to be a streamer. Now that she's free as a bird, Pokimane will experiment with other streaming platforms like YouTube and says that Twitch's messy management is part of the reason why she's moving on. She criticized its botched rule changes, such as the nudity rule it recently deployed then quickly walked back on, its management of partnerships, its marketing, its moderation, including inconsistent or ineffective wielding of bans. And that's something I think everyone who watches Twitch or anyone who streams on Twitch can agree on. Twitch's policy changes and rules and the way it bans certain people and not other people is kind of bull. I, I mean, every, everyone knows that if I was making as much money as Pokimane, would I leave the platform because of that? Absolutely not. But it's still a valid concern. Sure. My priority is making a cool, safe environment and community for many, many, many people, said Pokimane. I think there are a lot of problems that minorities on Twitch still face and that I wish they could do more about. I do think they try and I appreciate that a ton. I really do give them credit for that. She goes on to say, but girl, it's 2024. We still got so many of these damn problems. Like when I tell you there are people, viewers on Twitch, who harass and stalk streamers to no end, who have made thousands of accounts, and you can send this information for years to Twitch and they can't do a thing about it. They're not going to do a thing about it because they don't do IP bans. This is probably the biggest concern and the most valid one that I hear her talk about here. 
these like obsessive fans and stalkers, especially towards female streamers, but even towards male streamers, I've experienced this, where fans will try to contact you through like whispers on Twitch, or they'll like find all your other socials, they'll message you on Twitter, on Discord, anywhere that they can possibly, and if you ban them, if you block them, they'll just make a new account and do it again, and then make a new account and do it again, over and over and over and over. I've actually had this happen, where someone made two or three or maybe four accounts and kept trying to contact me, and I kept having to block them. I can only imagine what it would be like if you were a female streamer with simps, and there was like an obsessive simp that just made a thousand accounts to message you over and over and over constantly. That must be terrifying, and I can absolutely see her point here. Like I said, probably the most valid point that she makes. Twitch does not do IP bans, so people can't just like forever be kicked off Twitch. It's not even a thing that can happen. So these people can just keep coming back forever. The article continues, Pokimane hopes to expand her audience and provide better viewer experiences on other platforms, away from what she sees as an increasingly toxic Twitch streaming culture, which she cites as the biggest thing driving her away from the site, following a period of optimism during her Fortnite and Among Us streaming days. During the pandemic, there were so many people watching streaming and caring about games, Pokemon said. There were so many more girls, there was such diversity in the demographic, I felt so much more seen and heard. And I was like, wow, this is what I've always wanted for streaming. This of course makes sense, I mean there were a lot more people watching during the pandemic, and the fact that there was much more diversity, much more women watching, was just a symptom of there being more people in general watching gaming because they couldn't go to work, they couldn't go outside, they, were, they had a lot of free time. Makes sense. Now, however, Twitch has regressed a lot, she thinks, especially in the rise of so much manosphere, red pill bullshit. I feel like that stuff has flourished within the male dominated live streaming sphere. This, I feel like, is a valid point, but really badly worded. The way she says the rise of so much manosphere, red pill bullshit, kind of comes off as like, fem cell language, if that, <laughs> if that makes sense, because I feel like those terms are used by incels and the toxic community that you see all over like 4chan and uh, on kick these days and all over like the most toxic environments and she might be trying to use that same language against people like that but it comes off as kind of a fem cell arguing against incels the streamer now feels that staying on Twitch either means futilely combating bigotry and shit spewing from other Twitch streamers or trying to grow her following by appealing to their audiences neither of which she wants to do why are you going to speak against someone with dozens of thousands of followers and stands that are going to go against you and shit down your throat? It's almost like there's no point expressing your opinion to people that you're never going to change anyways, you know? This does make sense, though, because I have noticed Twitch chats getting more and more toxic. That, like, extreme toxic community that's over on kick the like incel 4chan mob like i like i mentioned that seems to be moving over to twitch as kick is getting less viewers so it almost feels like twitch lost all of its toxicity or a lot of it and now it's coming back and it feels worse than ever i think it's more widespread i don't think it's like specifically targeting one subsection of streamers i don't think it's specifically targeting women or minorities i think it's just everywhere even though they probably do have it worse and this inability to express your opinion i experienced that on my youtube videos. I mean, a bunch of you are probably going to comment how much you hate this right now. And that's just like, you can't argue with people that are like that because there's no changing their mind. Even when you do something as simple as bringing the news or bringing an update on something on a story, people will just spew hate all over anywhere that they can talk. And Twitch chat is definitely guilty of that. She continues, and frankly, a lot of them are prepubescent little boys that just need to go through puberty and then they'll figure it out. You know, like, I don't want that demographic. I don't want to take responsibility for them. But it also hurts my brain to see other streamers put such bad ideas into their minds. I agree with this. Twitch does have a very, like, young community and a lot of, like, young boys who just decide that they hate the world and are just going to comment and chat and say that you look stupid, say that you sound stupid, say that you are stupid. Just, unfortunately, that's how the internet is these days. Pokemon doesn't specify the streamer she's referring to. She says, you guys already know who and what I'm talking about, but I don't necessarily know exactly who she's talking about. If you know, let me know in the comments. What streamers specifically is she referring to here? And she reiterates several times that she's grateful for all the success she had on Twitch and appreciates the good parts of the site. But now that her contract is up, she's excited to explore YouTube, where she sees much more positive and well-rounded communities that you see now on Twitch. TikTok, where she says, so much cute, cozy gaming content. And she says she could literally sit on Instagram and talk shit for an hour now, and I've never been able to do that before. Can you believe that I've never been able to do that before? So she's saying basically every streaming platform is better than Twitch. 
Now, I do agree with a lot of her points here, like I've said, but it still kind of sucks that she's basically talking shit on all of the people that watch her on Twitch when those same people are the ones that donate to her, subscribe to her, give her bits, give her basically all the money that she makes. Considering, you know, besides contracts, Twitch doesn't pay you. It's all the viewers that pay you. So she is saying that Twitch is like a terrible place to be right now, but still it's those people that make her have a living. And it's those people that are going to move to watch her on YouTube or wherever that are going to continue to give her money and give her a living. So as much as I do agree, it would probably be best if she toned back talking shit on her fans specifically. Talk shit about Twitch as a platform all you want, but you probably shouldn't call all of your viewers like toxic prepubescent boys because then they might stop giving you money. But Pokimane here is just the most recent big streamer who has left Twitch, and it seems like Twitch is hemorrhaging streamers pretty badly. They either need to clean their act up over there and make it more lucrative for streamers and more worthwhile for streamers, maybe implement IP bans or make it a better viewing experience or just make a better streaming experience in general, even if it doesn't have to do with the monetization of things. If Twitch can do that and fix itself, this might stop happening where we're losing all the big names. But honestly, YouTube is looking bigger and better than ever. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments. Do you think there's a problem right now with Twitch? Do you think another platform like TikTok or YouTube or Kick is going to take over? If you like this video, give it a like. If you don't, give it a dislike. If you want to watch me stream games on Twitch, for now at least, click the link in the description, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.